now welcome the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Kyle Larson. Uh, Kyle, congratulations on an outstanding season, 10 wins, record-setting lap-leading charge from the five team. S please give us a quick overview of your night and, uh, and an incredible season. Yeah, it was a uh, little bit of an up and down race compared to the you know four of us. Um, you know, there was moments where I was like, yeah, maybe I got a good enough car to win outright. And then there was times where I was definitely the fourth best car. So, um, you know, definitely a, a, a team win. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly glad that it took our whole, you know, I mean, it always takes your whole team, but r in one race, you know, Cliff, the engineers, making the adjustments on the car to keep us in the game. Uh, my pit crew is the, the main reason why we won that race. Uh, and, and I'm sure somewhere in there I, I made some good decisions too. So um, just happy that it uh, we had to earn this one and uh, worked our butts off to get it done. Okay, if you have a question, uh, please raise your hand and we'll get you a mic. We'll start in the back right here. Yeah, Ariel Keys, I think is her name. Hi, Nicholas O'Dell for Arizona Sports. Kyle, when you think about some of the things you've done this year, not just within the Cup Series, but within all different disciplines, uh, your 10 wins and championship here in the Cup Series, but also your success in the dirt tracks throughout the year. Can you think of a year throughout the course of your entire racing career, really your racing life, where you've had a year where you've done so many different things and dominated throughout all kinds of different disciplines? Well, I, I, I only got to run four Cup races last year, but but last year I won. I was able to win 46 races. So uh, these these last two seasons are ones that I'm very proud of and. Um, I hope I hope I can replicate it as as years go on. Um, you know, I, I wasn't sure if I'd ever top what I what I was able to accomplish last year, winning you know 46 times and about 50 percent of my races. But um, this year, you know, I haven't won as many races, but I've got more a lot more big wins. Um, you know, and, and what I'm proud about too this year, uh, there's a lot I'm proud about, but this year, you know, I, I raced so many different types of cars. I was able to win a marquee event in each of the cars that I race. Um, you know, the Chili Bowl and the BC nine, BC thirty nine and Midget, um, Kings Royal and Knoxville Nationals in the in a sprint car, uh, the Prairie Dirt Classic in a dirt late model, um, and you know, a handful of big wins uh, in the Cup Series. So, and, and to top it off with a with a Cup Series championship. So. Um, I don't think that I'll ever be able to top this year, but I hope I hope I I hope I can someday. Cole, can you raise your hand? Thank you. Congratulations, Kyle. Uh, Cole Cusimano, uh, the Money Stop podcast. Speaking on just that Money Stop and your crew, you mentioned there were times where you felt like you had the fourth best car. Did you ever think that you were always in it just because you, your pit crew was so good and, and the guys and the girls, the shop, you know? Yep. Yeah, I always felt like no matter how bad I felt like our car was at times, as long as I could stay with them, um, the, the other drivers in front of me, with our pit stall selection and, and my pit crew, I knew that we were going to be in it. And <laughs> for us to come in fourth behind them and, and come out the leader was a little bit better than I than I thought we could do. But um, my pit crew, I, I've got all the belief in the world of them. You know, they proved all season long that they were – consistent and consistently fast so um they uh, we we have such a great team and they're they're a massive part of it and they were the you know the reason why we we won tonight and then you you mentioned just uh, just now uh finding it hard to imagine like being able to top this year what's the next goal for you like what what do you want to accomplish next i don't know uh, i just got done winning the winning the cup series championship which is you know a dream come true but um, I don't know. I mean, uh, thankfully I'm I'm young. I'm still in my 20s, and who knows? You know, who knows what's out there? What other opportunities I might get? What other big races or or something I could run? Um, I, I'm up for anything. So, um, just very fortunate to to have all the opportunities I've ever been given, and um, it's hard to think about you know what else I would like to accomplish, but. Um, I love winning races, and, and I love driving all sorts of vehicles. Lee? Kyle, I, I've watched you take your kids all over the world, and to have that moment when you took Owen for the victory lap, 
What, what was that like for you? And did was there anything <coughs> special that the two of you shared? Yeah, that was that was really cool. I, I think it was Kevin Harvick maybe took Keelan. I can't remember what race uh, a few years ago, and you know I wasn't winning a lot then, but okay. And I I wasn't winning a lot then, but I was like, man, that'd be s that that was such a cool moment to share with your your son. Um, and I didn't even have the idea to do it t today. Um, I think it was somebody from NASCAR asked if I'd like to take Owen for a ride to Victory Lane, and I, I was like, yeah, for sure. Like it's really hot, so he's got to be careful in here. But um, he was so excited; I could see it in his face. He was holding the flag and the checkered flag, and um, you know he he's gotten to do a lot of wing dances with me in a sprint car, but um, not not too many cup wins. So um, it was super super cool to celebrate with him, my whole family. You know, Owen, Audrey, Caitlin, my mom and dad were here, my sister. Uh, I don't know when the last time she's been to one of my races. Um, so many of my friends were here. Paul Silva was here today. Uh, Hayden, our mechanic on the sprint car. Uh, Tommy, Tommy Tarleton and his wife were here. Um, there was so many people here to support me that, that have supported me for years now. Um, so it, it, made it, it made this win feel even greater. And I know I might have gotten you in, the, in trouble in the past asking you, you know, the biggest win was, you know, and you said the Chili Bowl, but I have to ask you, certainly this has to trump that victory. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, this, I don't, I don't, I mean, this year I've won so many big races, um, and it seems like each one I win, it's like, okay, that was my biggest win, and then you win another one, that was my biggest win, and I, I don't know if it ever, I don't know if there's another race that could ever top, you know, my, this win here today, you know, winning, winning a Cup Series race at Phoenix for a championship, it doesn't get any bigger. We'll go upstairs for a question. Press box. Jerry Jordan, Kickham Terrace at Net. Kyle, in the car, uh, as you were coming around with the, with the big flag and stuff, you had tears in your eyes. You couldn't really talk over the radio real well. What was that emotion going through you right at that time? What, what was the, the, the things that you were thinking of and, and knowing that this championship was a reality? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I there's you guys might not see it, but I tear up. A, you know, quite a bit <laughs> whenever I, you know, win races that mean a lot to me. And um, usually I, you know, get myself composed before interviews and before I take my helmet off. But, you know, today you guys got, you know, to see it, you know, because I'm, I'm taking the checkered flag and I got a camera straight in front of me. So you could see the emotion that I have for a lot of the wins I, I, I can get. But um, today was was more tears than, than normal, I think, just because the significance of, of the event of the journey that it took to get here and um, just, you know, I think, I think just everything, you know, the atmosphere of the race, all the friends and family I've had, I had here today, um, the cr my crew and the hard work that they put in all year, I, I felt um, just a big relief that I was able to win for them and get to, you know, enjoy it with them and um, it all, it all, well, a little bit of it was hitting me before the race started um, and then it all, it all kind of hit me there after the checkered. Dan, want to raise your hand? Uh, hi, Dan Galston, Associated Press. Kyle, I saw you had uh, Anthony and Michelle Martin here today. Um, wh what did it mean to, to have them here? What did you talk, did you talk, get a chance to talk to them after the race? And just what kind of role did they play in your comeback this season? Yeah, it was, uh, it was so great to have them here. Um, I think it worked out perfect with their schedule. I believe they were at the SEMA show or something earlier this week or last week and, and uh, was able to come here. And, um, yeah, they were a big part of, of my comeback last year, I guess. And, you know, just, you know, talking with them and, and building, you know, a closer friendship. And, you know, they've got a really tight relationship with Chevrolet and Jim Campbell. So uh, Anthony, you know, was all of last year before I was ever even close to, you know, making a return to NASCAR was always in Jim Campbell's ear about me. Um, so it, it makes me feel really special that they were here today and got to enjoy all the festivities, you know, taking pictures, uh, with our team next to the championship trophy. Um, they were definitely, you know, a big part of, they are a big part of my life now. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad they were here to share with it. Go up to Jordan. What was it like getting the championship ring from Jim France? 
That was cool. Uh, yeah, Steph's got it in the back. Okay. Uh, I was like, yeah, I just realized I don't have it on. Um, it. That was really cool. The uh, We were just at the barn before I came here, and, and that place is rocking right now. So, um, yeah, that was that was neat to you get the championship ring presented to me. I didn't know that was something that happened uh, you know, right after the race. I thought that was something you get presented sometime during the, the week of the banquet. So um, really cool to go there and see a lot of the folks from NASCAR and uh, get to share in a, a cocktail here with them and get presented a awesome, shiny ring. Two quick fo follow-up. Uh, one, what are you drinking? I, I My go-to is Captain Morgan and uh, Diet Coke. So... I'm try I'm pacing myself. This is just my first one. I'm not. You guys are probably bummed because I'm not like Ben Rhodes right now. But um, <laughs> I was watching that Friday, and I was like, okay, if I win, I'm not gonna be like him. So uh, no, that was that was cool to to see him enjoying it, and um, I really feel I haven't had time to like slam a bunch of drinks like he did. I don't really know how he did that. Uh, yeah. I told her before I came here, I was like, you need to start drinking some water because you're, <laughs> you're going to be in rough shape here soon. I, I've been around her for like 10 minutes, and I've seen her shotgun three or four different beers. So, um, And she never drinks, by the way. She, she's she got this reputation like she's the partier and this and that because she you know, shotguns a beer, but she she never <laughs> parties. So I, uh, I hope she can pace herself tonight. So you yeah, because she's been drinking all day during the race. We, like I said, we have a lot of friends here. So they were they were in the hospita hospitality tent right here. And, yeah, like, she better she better uh, sober up. When I did come over here, somebody was handing her water. So I was hopefully she uh, can drink that for a little bit. But you're up on stage at the barn. And no offense, I mean, they were chanting her name louder than they were chanting your name. Oh, yeah. And Sa yeah, then in the barn. Yeah, so she that. comes up on stage and, and shotguns a beer. What, I mean, what's going through your head? <laughs> she, can, she can have it. She can have all the – all the uh, eyes on her. Um, I don't know, NASCAR fans, they love drinking. I, I, d I can't drink beer, so um, you'll never see me shotgun anything. Um, so, yeah, they, they, uh, they definitely have that connection with her, and that's cool. I drink the hard liquor, though, so I have to really watch <laughs> my uh, pace. Go ahead, Bob. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. Uh, when we were talking to Caitlin, she said that – you know, the Chili Bowl was something that was a childhood dream that was achievable for you, but maybe a cup champion was something that you never thought was achievable. So I kind of wanted to ask you, did you ever think that you, that you would ever be sitting in this position? Yeah, so I, I don't really think that I ever, like, and don't s try and spin this in the wrong way because, like, I don't know if I ever – dreamt of winning the cup series championship because i felt like i feel like it's outside of like realistic things you know i feel like i dream about stuff that i know i can go do and i'm not sure i ever really thought that i could win a cup series championship you know i, I never i've always thought about winning races not championships and um i didn't know if i would ever win a cup series championship so um i can't say that it was like a dream of mine, um, and like I said, don't take that the wrong way because that's not what I'm trying to make it sound like. It's just it's so far out there that I never, I never thought that I would do it um, until you know I got I got with this team for real, you know for sure. Um, you know, early on in the year, I, I felt like you know, we could do it, but then you kind of think about how the format is and and all that. You're like, well, something's going to happen where I don't you'll know, win this championship so um maybe that's what kept it out of my dreams a little bit too of, of all the the circumstances that go into winning a, a championship in the cup series you know like with any other form of racing it's like a year-long thing you know and um you can you know, work your way towards winning a championship with this format it's just crazy so i think that's what's kind of you know, kept it from me like dreaming about these moments and how i would you know, see it being like Chase, you want to raise your hand? Chase McCabe, ESPN 1025, the game in Nashville. And uh, you won in Nashville. The banquet's going to be in Nashville. And I know you've spent a lot of time there and talked fondly about it. So how excited are you to celebrate your, your first championship in Nashville? I am extremely excited to go to Nashville. I love Nashville. Um, 
you know, we're, we're really close friends with the Boyers, and through Clint and Laura, we've been able to meet a lot of their friends, and um, Trace uh, is um, who we've met recently in Sonoma and got to you know, build a close friendship with. He knows a lot of big name musicians and stuff, so I'm hoping he can pull some strings and we can get a massive party going in, in Nashville. Um, we we Facetime them on the way to the barn. It was hard to hear, but I told him he better be he better be scouting some some good entertainers for us. So I'm really looking forward to Nashville. It's uh, one of the most fun cities you can possibly go to. So uh, definitely not a better spot for the banquet. Plenty of liquor too. You see? Yeah, yeah, plenty. Yeah, I'll, I'll be. I'm sure I'll get find some trouble, but uh, no, nah, I look forward to it. We'll go to Zach and then Davey. I can hear the rowdy crew from the barn walking in. <laughs> <laughs> Zach Sterniolo from Front Stretch. Kyle, uh, on that second to last re uh, uh, caution, rather, you were forced to restart six um, after losing a spot on pit road there, um, and uh, Truex and Blaney staying out. Um, how much differently did your car handle the dirty air at that time as opposed to that first short stint of the race um, when you were coming back through traffic? Uh, well, I don't think the dirty air necessarily affected it too much. Um, you know, towards the end of that longer run that led into that caution, I started. So the run, the two runs before that, I felt like we finally you know hit on our balance some, and I could apply the throttle like I needed to on exit. Built too tight, so then I think we probably started freeing back up again and um then I, I don't know if the track went through a shift or if, if our car just was looser but then i started getting loose and uh loose on exit and that whole run you know when i was when i restarted sixth and got back to uh fourth there i was just too free off to apply the throttle like i needed to um but you know out in clean air you know after we had the pit stop i still had a similar sort of balance to that but um you know, maybe you know martin's your balance wasn't quite as good uh, in that short little run, but yeah, it's uh, the dirt. I mean, clean air, or just track position, really is is important. What is your relationship with your pit crew like? Uh, obviously, you gave them a lot of credit for getting you out first on that last restart, and, and yeah, um, obviously they did a great job there for you. But um, what is your relationship with them like? Yeah, I mean, so our team, I feel like, is, is really tight. I think Cliff does a good job of, you know, I, like, before the other, you know, when I was at Ganassi, you know, I was never a part of, like, the pre-team kind of meetings and stuff with the pit crew and all that, and, and I love, you know, being a part of that and, and seeing and kind of going over the race strategy with everybody and, um, you know, seeing th them at the shop. I, I go to the shop more often a little bit and get to see their prep that goes into uh, stuff. So, um yeah, it's just it's a he does a great job leading this team and, and keeping us all close. You know, it's easy a lot of times for the driver, I feel like, to be distant from everybody, just the way that schedules are and, and all that. But I feel like I'm closer to my team than I've ever been with any other team. So um just really proud of all of them. Uh really proud about how consistent they were throughout the whole season and then for them to come in clutch like that on the final pit stop of the year. Uh, makes me feel good. So I, I owe them something very big, for sure. Uh, last one for you. Um, 18 months ago, did you see yourself ever being able to experience this moment? No, I didn't. I didn't. 18 months ago, I didn't think that I was ever going to be in a cup car again. So, um, you know, strapping in for Daytona 500 didn't even seem real, um, let alone winning the championship. So, no, it's definitely been a, a journey, a roller coaster. Um, but you know, I'm very thankful for my second chance and, and every opportunity I've been I've been you know, given in these last 18 months. So um, you know, life's a crazy thing, and and it's uh, you just got to stay positive through it all, and everything will hopefully work out for you. Davey, Davey Siegel with Front Stretch as well. You know, talking about those 18 months, they were what they were, but going all the way back to when you got your start in NASCAR specifically and in stock cars, like you know, back to the K&N days and to Ganassi and it kind of comes full circle now you winning your title on his last day as a car owner how has your relationship with stock cars specifically and NASCAR specifically evolved and changed over the last few years well um yeah you know it's it was so nice to see Chip today you know he is he is the sole reason why I'm why I'm here today I th I mean there's so many there's been a lot of people you know Rick's obviously been a big part of of this too but 
Ch you know, I, I met with every team owner uh, back in 2011, and Chip Ganassi was the only guy, the only team owner to even entertain me racing this car. And um, you know, I met with him for probably 20 minutes, and uh, he signed me up right then, you know, after. So um, I owe the world to him, and um, you know, it was it was nice to see him today, and and. And you'll see how you know happy and, and at peace I feel like he was with it, uh, with his final event as a team owner. So um, very thankful for all the years that I spent at Chip Ganassi Racing. Um, I still work out there with Josh Wise, so it's nice to see all the familiar faces. And um, a lot of the people from the 42 car, you know, they came by to congratulate me tonight. So it made me feel really good. And um, you know, it, it, it makes me feel really good inside. A little bit bittersweet, honestly, that you know I was able to win in in you know, Chip's last event as a as a car owner. Uh, Tony Stewart tweeted, "Congratulations to the best race car driver I've ever seen." Instant reaction. What does that mean to you to hear that coming from him? <laughs> that that's. I mean, today has been really cool. I mean, to to now hear you say that, and I did an interview with NBC uh, before the race started. Mario Andretti. I got to hear him talk about his thoughts on me and. Now Tony Stewart, you know, a, probably the the one driver. If I had to pick, you know, if I really had a true you know, racing hero, I would say it's Tony Stewart. So, um, who I uh, who I've always believed to be the best race car driver ever. So, that means a lot to me. And um, yeah, it's just you know, I try to model my my racing and my schedule off what I feel like you know Tony Stewart would would do. So that that makes me feel really good. Kelly. KellyCrandallRacer.com. Kyle, first off, um, Cliff was in here, and he mentioned a few times he's, he felt like the weak link on this team sometimes. And, and that yeah, that seems odd. D did you know that at any point during the year that he was putting so much pressure on himself? And he also mentioned that he, he, would s he hasn't slept basically all year. <laughs> yeah, so I, I didn't realize that, like, he doesn't sleep <laughs> the night before a race. I asked – I think I was just, like, joking with him earlier. I was like, man, how would you, you sleep last night? And he's like – I didn't, <laughs> and uh, I was like, "Man, really?" Uh, I like I slept like a baby last night, but um, yeah, that's odd to hear him say that he felt like the weak link. Which I I don't feel like we have any weak links on our on our team um, at all. Uh, which I think we proved that tonight because it took a whole team effort to to win that race. But um, we joke with Cliff a lot that that you know when we don't win, he's sad and you know he's mopey and all this and that. So. Um, it doesn't surprise me though, you know, that he, I guess that he thought that he was a weak, weak link just because he, he holds everybody to a high standard, but you know, you know, apparently himself too. So, um, I think you need that though. I mean, you, you need to have that drive in each and every one of you to, you know, want to be better each and every day. So, um, he's an amazing crew chief, amazing team leader, and I am extremely fortunate to you'll be with this race team. Uh, and I, I think Jimmy Johnson is, is a big credit to it as well. You know, um, I, I think, you know, his leadership skills as well as molded Cliff into, you know, the person he is and he, the crew chief he is today, as well as all the, the team members on this five car. Um, I'm sure you'll look at the, the numbers eventually, but, you know, 10 wins, all the laps led to come back, have the year that you had. Uh, you said it, you, you didn't realistically think think of this as you didn't think of this as something that was realistic so does this feel impossible to, to not only come back but to have the year that you had yeah I mean it's it's uh I don't know what to think about it really it's um yeah it's just wild like I didn't I didn't know that we would have a season like this I thought you know, I mean with Chase winning last year I knew we'd be strong but I didn't ever think that we would win you know, double-digit races in the Cup Series. This isn't anything that I ever thought I would do in in the Cup Series. You know, double-digit wins and you know, winning the championship, winning half the playoff races. You know, I thought when Tony Stewart won half of the playoff races in the year that he won the championship, I was like, that'll never be done again. And for me to to match him on that, um, you know, laps led the you know the wins, the top fives and stuff. Um, it. And, and all the wins outside of, of cup racing, you know, I, <laughs> I never, I never thought racing for Hendrick Motorsports, I would get to race a single dirt race in a year, um, let alone as many as I have this year. So um, it's, it's definitely a unbelievable season on so many different levels.
Go to the back, Daniel and then Jonathan. Daniel McFadden, FrontChurch.com. Kyle, you, you, said you, you, uh, <clears throat> you said you met with every team back in 2011. What do you remember about the me meeting with Hendrick Motorsports back then? <laughs> I joke with Jeff about this. Uh, he'll probably be upset that I said this. But I, you know, I, I might have been one of the first times I met Jeff Gordon. But, uh, you know, I was like starstruck a little bit, you know, to be at Hendrick Motorsports and, and getting to you know, be there with Jeff. And he, I remember him showing me around the shop. And I remember <laughs> I remember turning the corner. We were going to his office. I turned the corner. His supermodel wife was standing there. And she's like seven foot tall and like beautiful. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> um, and then, you know, we sat down in his office. And, you know, Jeff Gordon is, you know, such an awesome race car driver and one that I've looked up to since I was a little toddler. And um, I remember being so disappointed when I left there because everybody knows I love dirt racing. He's like, you know, you really need to get out of dirt cars. They're going to teach you about habits and this and that. And um, <laughs> I was like, man, that was a terrible time there, <laughs> Hendrick, you know, after I left. Um, and I think I went, I think I went from <laughs> Hendrick to Ganassi probably right after that. Um, and you know, I was not feeling like too pumped up about the day. Really, I think I was there for like three days and met, like I said, met with every team and just being disappointed every every time I left the race shop because it was like, oh yeah, you know, like they're just going through the motions. Like, oh yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, you got a cool resume. Oh yeah, we need a few hundred thousand dollars for you to race our car next year. And I was like, I'm not, I don't have anybody to bring money to. And um, then when I met with Chip, uh, I was I was feeling you know on top of the world. So. Um, I, yes, I joke with Jeff about my trip to Hendrick that day, and and he you know tells me about the kind of the behind the scenes conversations he had with you know, Rick after that. You know, they I think had Chase kind of already um, you know worked on signing him up at that point when I met with him. So it it all worked out in the end, and uh, they got to uh, I got to get experience, and, and they didn't have to pay for any of it. <laughs> so uh, before that got to them, so it worked out. Staying in the back, just uh, Jonathan. There you go. Yep. Thank you very much, uh, Kyle. Congratulations on the championship. Well, when you look back at this moment, per se, when you're on the rocker 30, 40 years from now, hopefully not 30, 40 years from now, but in the future, what is one thing you'll remember the most about this night? This night? This night. <laughs> that pit stop. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think definitely. I th I think the pit stop will come first in my mind, um, but the hard work that it took throughout that whole race. You know, I, in the beginning, like I, s I said, you know, I, our car was so far from being capable of winning um, the race, and and they got they did a great job of getting our balance within the range to where I felt like maybe we could go you know, race for the win, and then then my pit crew. Yeah, yeah. So probably probably just the the team effort that it took to win. All right, if you want to go over here to the man in the black shirt. Thank you. Spencer Hill, ESPN Radio, Albuquerque. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Kyle. Cliff came in here and he spoke about the opportunity that he took to join you with a lot of the sprint car midget and late model races this season. Can you tell me a little bit about how that benefited your guys' relationship with the lack of practice and qualifying this year and just how you guys were able to learn each other's languages? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm really easy to work with. Um mostly because I don't know anything about a race car and um but you know, I, I think it was it was just good to get him there. Um, you know, and and he, and I didn't he came on his, you know, own behalf and um, just, it was just nice for me to see that, you know, he cared about all the racing that I do and wanted to learn about it, wanted to talk to the crew chiefs, you know, pick their brain about how I communicate and stuff. And I think that, you know, really kind of kicks our relationship a little bit. And, um, he's, like I said, I'm, I'm really easy to work with. I feel like he's really easy to work with. I feel like we're a great, you know, we have great chemistry because he is so good at communicating and, and so good at painting the picture. And, and I, I like to process all that information to understand the flow of the race and stuff. So, um, yes, it was, it was nice that he came to, you know, a lot of my dirt races and, you know, I, he'll pick up the phone and talk to Kevin Rumley about the late model. He'll, he'll, 
talk to Paul Silva about the sprint car and stuff. So um, it's neat when, when you have a crew chief that has your back and supports all the stuff that you race. And then a quick follow-up to that. Is a Indy 500 on the horizon for you? I don't know. I mean, like I said earlier, I, I would love to entertain anything, wha whatever type of vehicle it may be. So um, I, I like the being known as a versatile race car driver. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm open to anything. It's just logistically it's just a tough thing to do. You know, it takes a lot of dedication to go race that event and, and not just – say that you raced in it you know say you know you want to i would want to go there and know and know that i've got a shot to win know that i've put in the effort and the work to win um, it just logistically it's tough but i would for sure entertain it if um you know if rick would let me i don't know i haven't i haven't talked to him about it i i really you know all this stuff i feel like the indy 500 question <laughs> always comes up and it's usually it usually comes up before before the Indy 500, but I feel like this year has been weird because it's been like all year. Everybody's talked to me about it, and uh, I, I've told you know, I've told everybody around me like I don't even want to talk about it, you know, until the season's over. So, um, you know, we'll see. It, it it like I said, it just takes a lot of it logistically takes a lot of work, and um, you know, I, I want to be with a good team too. Okay. Congratulations. When Mr. H was in here, we were discussing the history of the number five and the talented drivers that have been behind the wheel. With, And he mentioned Mark Martin, who he thought really had a legitimate shot to win a championship in the number five. And I had mentioned to him that it was 25 years ago when Terry Labonte last brought the five a championship. I know you haven't had time to even think about that, but now, now you're in an elite class with somebody like Terry Labonte a Hall of Famer bringing the five back to a championship. What are your thoughts about something like that? Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm really happy to be able to add on to the legacy of the the number and the paint scheme, um, and, and what all it means for Hendrick Motorsports and and Rick and Linda Hendrick especially. So, um, yeah, it's it's you know the originating car number for their team. Uh, there there's just so many awesome things that you know, now I get to be attached to with it, with that number. So um, just fortunate that uh, you know, he trusted me to, to carry on, you know, the legacy of the number five and, and especially the paint scheme. And we were able to add on to a, you know, a lot of big wins and, and a lot of, you know, marquee, uh, you know, special moments. We'll hear it, Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, Kyle, Jeff Gordon was saying tonight that he he didn't think it, at one point that anybody could do the things that you've done this year, win all the different series because you're winning at the elite levels at all series, and says, look, Kyle's proven me wrong. And, and you talked about uh, before the playoffs about you said, you know, every generation needs somebody to set high goals, and I'm fortunate enough to, to race in a lot of different cars. How do you explain the year that, that you've had with all the big wins and everything and what it's what it's meant to, to go through a year that I, I think arguably you probably have to go back 40, 50 years to, to even look at anybody who's done anything that, that you've done in the U.S.? Yeah, it's uh, it just – I don't know. I, I think another 20, 30 years from now, I think I'll be able to really – sit down and appreciate it i mean i appreciate it for sure like I, I i understand the season that we've had but i don't think i don't think you really can appreciate it until you hear of other generations talking you know that are younger than me talking about a season like i've had so um i think i'm just a very lucky guy who gets to race in the best race cars of all the series that I get to run in. You know, I'm, I'm in the best seat in the Cup Series. I'm in the best seat in the Sprint Car. I'm in the best seat in a, in a late model. I, you know, I'm in the best seat in a midget, whether it be with Chad Boat or my old car. Um, you know, I, I think it takes a lot of hard work to get those opportunities and a lot of hard work to take advantage of it. But um, without good people around you and, and you know, being able to be in good race cars, I would never get to have a season like I've had these last two years. And how did you convince the Hendrick folks to allow you to do the race? You talked about you weren't sure, and obviously 
you know, when you came in, I'm guessing you probably didn't have a whole lot of leverage. Yeah. Um, and I know Jeff said, you know, he was for it, but he said Rick needed convincing. Was was there anything that you were able to do, or how did you present your case to to do this when there were probably a lot of questions? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I, like, I, I knew I had no leverage <laughs> at all. Um, you know, when I went to meet with him and or Rick and Jeff, I remember that initial meeting. You know, it, it was great. You know, Rick talked about how much he, you know, loved my driving style and this and that, and you know, he'd love to get me in his in his race car. And you know, then it got to the end of the meeting, and um, he was like, well, you know, what do you, what's you know, what's something that you want? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm nervous. You know, like I know how Rick Kendrick feels about dirt racing and stuff. Like, <coughs> like this isn't. I'm gonna hope I'm not shoot myself in the foot right here before I ask this question. But I was like, like I. I'd like to race some dirt races, <laughs> uh, and um, he w I, he didn't he didn't shut it down at all. You know, I, I'd kind of Jeff had mentioned to me you know, a few times before that you know the culture and the and how they you know kind of handle their driver's schedule was changing, but I didn't really believe it. Um, you know, he was telling me that stuff, but I threw it out there, and um, I've gotten to race way more than I thought I would. You know, when I was with Ganassi. In the beginning, it was nothing. I couldn't really race anything. And then it, it kind of morphed into 25 races in a year. And then it morphed into 25 races in a cup season. And um, I thought I would be something similar to that. But you know, I'll, by the end of this year, I'll race probably 100 total races. So you know, the most I've, I've raced in a long time, especially you know, while I'm a full-time cup series driver. And also, I know that um, you know, there's not as much racing at this point of the season just because everything's closing down. But you know, I think Jeff said uh, you know, it was a little bit concerned about you know, what it would be like if you weren't racing as much during even the playoffs. And you know, I guess he said you went out and did some go-kart racing this week and said asked you about that. So was, was there anything special about the go-kart racing you did or this week or just, just uh, I didn't around? do any go-kart racing this week. I did that go-kart race before the Roval. Um, but, yeah, I, I was uh, – yeah, I didn't yeah, – they, they didn't really – you know, I have any restrictions on me all year long, and I, you know, when I got to the close to the playoffs, um, you know, Jeff and Jeff was like hinting, like, you know, you shouldn't, you should be, you know, really focus on the playoffs and this and that, and even, even Rick, you know, said it a few times, and I kind of just played dumb, like, oh yeah, 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 I'll, yeah, I'll do that, yeah, whatever, and then uh, you know, I'd go off and race dirt races, and um, you know, my kind of thought on it all was, you know, why change what I was doing with my schedule um when i feel like all that racing that i've done leading up to the playoffs helped me win you know a bunch of cup races and see I, I i felt like it was important for me to race um during the playoffs and you know it it paid off so um i hope that means good things for my schedule next year no there's a number of questions left but we got to get kyle moving so we will uh take one more and i'll be from alex Alexandra with the Charlotte Observer. Uh, Dustin actually asked a question that that um, I think you answered my original one. But I guess Rick Hendrick was in here earlier. He said that he hopes that you retire with Hendrick Motorsports. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope I'm <laughs> with with his organization uh, as long as I want to you know, race cup cars. And I don't know how long that is. Uh, I, you know, if we're winning races and championships, it in you know 20 more years like I'll still be doing it so um yeah it's uh it's a great great organization one that I think every driver in the garage area uh would love to race for so um extremely fortunate and, and grateful and thankful and so many different other words that can describe how I feel about being there so um you know, Rick Hendrick is one of the greatest human beings I'm, I've gotten the pleasure to, to meet and and get to know a little bit more this year so he's got a great group of people running that place and um you know all of us drivers there are very lucky to be there and i and i hope the four of us drivers can be a part of uh hendrick motorsports for a very long time because i feel like we all get along really well thank you congratulations kyle thank you so much for the time and uh enjoy the off season thank you guys no off season <laughs>